Good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm not at the Basically Nomads bus today because I am starting, this is actually my first day of work, on the new bus project. So as you can see, we've got a blank canvas to work with. We obviously have to pull up this floor still, but there's all this aluminum tracking over here that has to come up first. Apparently it can be a little bit of a pain, but that's what we're gonna get after first. Also, this bus is super nice. Obviously a lot newer than mine, but look at this cockpit here. I mean, I backed it up last night and it feels like a spaceship. So the first thing that we're gonna do here is uh, spray some kind of like WD-40, I think PB Blaster on all of those iron bolts and then try to get those up, get that aluminum trekking off and then we'll get all the plywood up. So let's not take any more time, let's just get right to it. Good morning guys, welcome to day number two on the bus build. We're still working on those aluminum rails that we've got down that are just a pain in my butt so far. I tried the uh, Allen keys and everything, still seized up even after a day of PV Blaster. So we're gonna go the alternative route and just hack stuff up with a saw. Cause why not? All right, let's do that. We have these Milwaukee carbide teeth blades these torch blades that are supposed to tear through metal. So we're gonna try to get underneath the, the railing and then just cut those bolts out from the floor. I did it. I got my first freaking aluminum rail off there. What a nightmare. Okay guys, we've actually made a good amount of progress. As you can see behind me, we have half of the track off. All the short stuff though, to be honest, we still have these four really long tracks. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, there is no easy way. So what I would recommend, and what I would tell you is it's just gonna take a lot of work and a lot of time. The combination method seems to be go underneath with a grinder, chew through as many as you can see, you won't be able to see them all, but you'll know on top whenever they're popped out. So you come back up top and you can either use your reciprocating saw from the side and cut it like that, which is pretty good, or you can take the grinder on the top and slice across. So you can slice just like this, go across this way a bunch of times, keep going until you basically make it where the top of the bolt isn't there and you'll be able to get it with a pry bar. So, it sucks a lot. I would not recommend it. Stay away if you can. That's my real recommendation, just stay away from the rails. So good luck if you're tackling this, but I would not recommend it. So I think I found a tentative solution to get this railing up. So what I've been doing is I'll take the pry bar, stick it underneath there, and just lift up a little bit to where I can get the sawzall blade underneath to go to my next bolt. So like if my bolt is here, I go where the last bolt was, lift it up enough so I can get the sawzall in, and then just take it out. Unfortunately, the bit, the bit that you really need to go with are these, uh, well, you know, it doesn't have to be Milwaukee, but this is the one that worked out for me. These uh, carbide teeth, and I don't know if it's just the DeWalt setup or what, but these shanks on the end just really suck. It's broken twice now, and the reason I say twice now is because since this is a $16 bit, I'm not going to buy a bunch of these, so I've been repurposing them, and I'll show you how I've been doing that. I'll take a beat up blade that I have and I'm gonna go get my clamp and clamp them together and I'm just gonna cut all the way around that and make a new shank. Alright my friends that wraps up day number two. I'm gonna show you the progress. Yeah if you think it looks slow you're right. <laughs> you are so right. For all the reasons we've already talked about a thousand times but I think I got a system down and all of that will be gone tomorrow. I'll take a wire wheel to all that rust tomorrow and then that means day four will be uh, primer and rust-oleum. That's the plan. Let's see how that goes. Welcome back to the bus, guys. It is day three. Just this section of floor and the rest of this ridiculous, terrible track. Let's just get right to it.
So after I kind of got my system in place, it was all really kind of downhill from there. Um, obviously it still took a lot of time, but again, once I kind of figured out what I wanted to do, it was pretty easy. I also, as you can see here, I, I started to use a hydraulic jack, just a regular automotive jack, to help get extra leverage under things that I couldn't get up with the pry bar. And that actually made the job a lot easier. So once I got that final bar up, it was all about cleaning up and then removing any and all screw heads that were still popping out. I just did that with a pry bar, just kind of wrenched them out if I could. And if I couldn't wrench them out because they were too rusted, then I would just cut them off from the top. Then I removed the stairs with a reciprocating saw and then kind of did the same thing, cleaned it all up. So then after that, we went ahead and got a wire wheel. Uh, it's better if you use an actual corded drill because you're going to be doing this for a while. And so the purpose and the point of this is just to remove any surface rust. You try to get down to bare metal if possible, but sometimes it's just not realistic. So you just use this to the point that you really get all the loose stuff out of there so that whenever you're painting, you don't have stuff chipping and then the original floor can show through. Okay, the inhibitor is down and all the all the rust areas are actually turning black already. You can actually paint on that as long as you don't lay it down as thick as I did. You can paint within 10 minutes. We're not gonna do that. I did not expect I'd be getting all the way to Rust-Oleum today, so I'm gonna go get it now. I'm gonna get that primer. It'll probably be like the last thing that I do. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, I'll probably go up on the wall just to make sure I get in that crack. And then we might be putting down floors as soon as tomorrow. This is insane. Hey guys, welcome back to the bus. It is day four. Day four on the bus and we are filling in holes and we just got our delivery of wood today. The client actually requested that I use foil tape to cover the holes, which is fine, we'll do that. Um, I'm gonna lay some silicone first, just to be sure that water doesn't make its way up underneath that foil tape and get trapped. So here's what I used. I went with a combination of this polyurethane sealant. You can get this at Menards. I used that in conjunction with the foil tape. Um, I think that will be fine. Like I said on mine, I did the pennies, but I think this way is just fine too. So you'll do that polyurethane, and I just would do like a whole row at once, and then tape up the entire row. And I like how it turned out. Um, so yeah, I think if you use only the foil tape, the water will creep in there eventually. And if any water is able to sit in there, like it's just going to be a bad time. You're going to end up with rust problems again eventually. We are now ready to put down some subfloor, which is what we're about to get ready to do. We're gonna go with two by fours on the floor with about two foot spacing. Uh, the reason I'm going with two by fours is I wanna make sure that where my boards are meeting, I have a two by four there. So I'm screwing that plywood directly into the two by fours on both ends to make sure that it's stronger. Um, also, I went with a type of OSB for the subfloor, but it's a little more uh, moisture resistant. So we'll get inch and a half actual um, insulation in the floor, which I think is pretty important. I double checked and made sure that we'd have the headroom, and I think that we will, since we're at about four and a half inches over my feet. So it will go up two inches, so there'll still be two inches of headroom, because he's about the same height that I am. So, with all that said, let's get to laying some floor. day five actually I will go over my process a little bit so we're just doing two by fours down the middle with two by twos on the side so that the OBS has a spot to rest all the way around we have 20 inch gaps in between roughly a 20 inch I'm actually measuring so that 
so that the center of these boards or near the center, my OBS will lay down and that will be the joint point so that it's gonna be really strong. But actually, even stiff polystyrene boards, like they're actually rated for really high uh, impact. I think like 15 to 20 PSI that you can apply on them before they like start to crumble. So they're really, really strong. So that is another reason why I would definitely recommend doing polystyrene in the bottom is so that you have that extra, um, you know, that extra support. If you were to do something like wool insulation, you would need a lot more support, a lot more boards in the floor. But there is something to say about the ecological impact of, you know, foam versus wool. So there's that. So insulation has done, just got it done here on day four. So some of these I had gaps to make sure that my two by fours were spaced out correctly. So I've got some spray foam. I'm gonna go back over it. All these little, like if there's a little gap like that, I'll put spray foam and then in all my corners. And then I'll put some uh, drop cloth on top of this whole thing is just a vapor barrier. And mostly that's to protect the plywood because plywood can be um, a little more prone to moisture, a little more prone to cracking and things like that. Obviously it's not gonna be a perfect barrier because we're gonna be screwing through it, but it'll be much better I think than not having one at all. Okay, so while the foam is hardening up, we're gonna come out here and go ahead and work on this plywood. Um, I need just a few inches off of there, 90 and a fourth inches uh, the whole way across. So I can go ahead and cut all these boards to that length while that's drying. And as soon as that's done drying, I'm hoping to get that drop cloth done. So all that's left to do is to trim up all of that dried insulation and we're gonna put down that drop cloth I just did this with a staple gun really easy stapled it to all the two by fours and that was it so hopefully you guys enjoyed the first week of this build uh, I am gonna keep this going updates might be a little more sparse than I would like them to be sparse rather so probably expect them every two weeks is what I would assume if I can get them out faster I would love to maybe I'll end up stacking weeks together but our next week is going to be dealing with the insulation. So I did spray foam insulation. And you'll see a video coming out about that pretty soon. Other than that, guys, you already know what to do. Like the video if you liked it. Comment. Tell me what you thought of this one and the things that you yourself would like to see or questions that you might have about the bus build and what we've done so far. Uh, the build is going along really well. And what I'll do for you guys next week is try to share some pictures of where I am with the build now because I'm actually about four weeks ahead of where this video is right now. So again, let me know what you thought. Go ahead and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much. Peace.